Is this really the world's smallest PC? Well, if it's not, then I'm not a six foot tall man eating chicken. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired software engineer from Microsoft, going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And today, we're going to look at the tiniest PC out there. It might be stretching the bounds of credulity to call it a PC, but once you see the specs, I'm sure you'll agree that it's no mere toy. Best of all, it's under $60 and completely turnkey. This episode is brought to you in part by NVIDIA. That might surprise you since I don't typically do sponsored episodes, and I didn't plan to change that except they offered me a sweet NVIDIA 4080 GPU that I've decided instead to give away to a lucky subscriber. All you have to do is to make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn on the bell icon, and then hopefully leave a useful or compelling comment on this video. I'll pick one commenter at random when we do the upcoming GPU versus CPU drag racing episode, and the lucky winner will receive the brand new 16 gigabyte NVIDIA 4080 free of charge. I'll make that announcement right in the GPU episode, so if someone reaches out to you claiming to be me and you didn't hear it in the episode first, that's a scam. I don't use Telegram and would never ask you to pay the shipping as some of these scams usually do. Make sure you see the GPU versus CPU episode to find out if you're the lucky winner. Now, back to the tiny PC. This little system is more powerful by most measures than the big dual processor 200 MHz MIPS RISC system that I used as my development system at Microsoft back in the day. From task manager to zip folders to Windows Pinball, I wrote all my code in those early days on that RISC machine and it served me well for a couple of years. They're both 32-bit machines and yet this tiny PC specs out better than it did. And speaking of the specs, what are they? Well, the entire system is designed around the ESP32 microprocessor. The ESP32 is an impressive chip designed by Espressive Systems known for its low cost, high performance and energy efficiency. The dual core microcontroller or microprocessor is built on the Tensilica Extensa LX6 architecture with a clock speed of up to 240 megahertz on both cores. It boasts a substantial 520 kilobytes of internal SRAM, 4 megabytes of external flash memory, and up to 8 megabytes of external RAM, as well as a myriad of peripheral interfaces such as SPI, I2C, USB, CAN bus, and much more. One of the key features that sets the ESP32 apart is its integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities, making it a versatile choice for IoT applications. The built-in wireless connectivity makes it an ideal choice for smart home projects, wearables, and sensor networks, simplifying the process of designing connected devices. The dual-core powerful processing provides improved multitasking, allowing for more complex and resource-intensive applications. Additionally, the ESP32 is equipped with a wide range of analog and digital peripherals, including analog to digital converters, digital to analog, and pulse width modulation control, which enable developers to easily interface with various sensors, actuators, and output displays. The ESP32 microcontroller is a powerful, flexible, and cost-effective solution for all your IoT and embedded systems needs. This M5 stack takes it several steps further, however. It builds on the foundation laid by the ESP32 and adds the 320x240 color OLED display as well as a speaker, a microphone, and a USB port. It also features a microSD card slot for gigabytes of non-volatile file-based storage. The Core 2 includes a range of built-in sensors including accelerometers, a gyroscope, a magnetometer, or Hall effect sensor. The device includes a built-in battery management system allowing it to be powered by a rechargeable battery that it in turn can manage and charge. The ESP32 system is based on the Harvard architecture. Unlike the more common von Neumann model, which more liberally mixes code and data, the Harvard architecture mandates that both are kept entirely separate. And to that end, the M5 stack CPU has separate buses for code and data. Code is stored in flash RAM, completely separate from the 520 kilobytes of system RAM that the chip supports. Certain models can carry additional expansion RAM of up to 8 megabytes. Taking a look at the display, the first thing you'll see is a little shell reminiscent of the Windows XP desktop. As we progress from the boot screen to the desktop, we can even pop up the start menu. Full disclosure, however, this is a shell I wrote myself to look like the Windows desktop, but there's no port of Windows to the ESP32 processor yet. At 520K, the ESP32 in base form doesn't really have enough RAM to run a real fork of Windows. But the optionally available 8 megabytes of PS RAM might satisfy it, though we're missing one fundamental piece that's essential for a protected operating system like Windows, an MMU or memory management unit. Why? Because without an MMU, it's difficult to provide the necessary memory protection and virtualization features that are required by modern operating systems like Windows and Linux. The MMU is what stops you from writing to the memory of the operating system or of other processes, and it's a key component of a secure system. 
But since it's designed primarily for embedded applications, the ESP32 doesn't have an MMU and therefore wouldn't be practical for a modern desktop operating system. That being said, there have been some attempts to port Linux to the ESP32. For example, the ESP32 Linux project aims to create a minimalistic version of Linux that can run on the ESP32 without an MMU. However, this project is still in the early stages of development, and it is not yet clear whether it will be practical to run Linux on the ESP32 in this way. The M5 stack is running my shell on top of FreeRTOS, which is, somewhat predictably, a free and open source real-time operating system for embedded devices. It features multitasking, threads, core management, memory management, sockets, files, and most everything else you'd expect in a modern programming environment. It also supports a complete web server that can serve files from the SD card or from internal flash storage known as SPIFFs. It's in the embedded space where the ESP32 and the M5 stack really shine. Let me take you on a tour of just some of the projects that I've built around the M5 and the ESP32 specifically. One area I've spent a lot of time working on is real-time LED control. I built a software platform known as Night Driver, and it's completely free and open source. You can get the code and even join in on contributing to it on GitHub. The project can be found at nightdriverled.com, and I'll also put a link to it in the video description. Night Driver uses the ESP32's RMT square wave signal generators to control up to eight completely independent, individually addressable LED strips in parallel. Once the data is handed off, it runs completely async to the CPU and is handled by the chip hardware itself. The first application using all eight channels was the Tiki Fire Umbrella. I added light strips to each spoke of a patio umbrella, and the ESP32 drives effects ranging from flames to stars to ambient lights. It's one of my favorites, and I think all umbrellas should feature them. A similar project, but for people with less space perhaps, is the four-spoke atomic fire lamp. You can see it over my shoulder in most episodes, and it's capable of a dozen or more effects. Each spoke is independent, and so for example, it can run a different effect or a different color palette on each spoke. Night Driver also leverages the ESP32's Wi-Fi capability. In addition to the built-in effects that run locally on the chip, it can generate and synchronize light shows on any PC, Mac, or Linux box. Any number of ESP32 client devices can be driven at the same time, and they all sync to the main server's clock using NTP protocol. The animations are created a few seconds in advance and then sent over to the ESP32 via Wi-Fi, where they are buffered in memory until their timestamp comes due. They are then drawn by the ESP32 perfectly synchronized. The frames are also compressed for easier transmission and less traffic on the Wi-Fi, and they are automatically decompressed on the fly by the CPU of the ESP32. Night Driver can also drive LED matrices. I've used it to build the Spectrum project, which is an audio visualizer. Using the internal microphone, the ESP32 samples digital audio at CD quality from the microphone up to 50 times per second. It uses the powerful CPU processing available to run an FFT on those samples and break them into audio bands for easy display as a spectrum analyzer. It also features several other compelling visual effects. In addition to LED strip-based setups, Night Driver can run Hub75 matrices. These are the panels that you see making up jumbotrons everywhere from stadiums to the Las Vegas Strip, and the Mesmerizer project makes displaying effects on them rather trivial. There are a number of special matrix effects built in, ranging from the classic spectrum analyzer to other audio visualizers, subscriber count signs, and so on. One of the effects is a pong clock where the computer plays against itself as the ball speed incrementally increases. There's also a version of Conway's classic Game of Life. Using the Wi-Fi ability that I referred to earlier, there's an included Python script that can download a YouTube video, transcode it to the size required by the matrix, and then send the timestamp frames across the network to be displayed on the video matrix. Since multiple ESP32 clients can be synchronized together, you can use that functionality to build your own Jumbotron out of multiple panels, subject only to the limits of your Wi-Fi bandwidth and the ability of the server computer to process and send out the frames. Night Driver uses DMA to display its data on the hub matrix at high speed, and so there are a lot of pins to connect, about 16 for just the matrix itself. Now the ESP32 does have enough free pins to do it, but you need a different model of the M5 stack if you want to access all those bare pins. It's still a bear to wire up, so as an adjunct to the Night Driver software project, I've built the Mesmerizer hardware board. The PCB is a two-layer surface mount design and plugs directly into the back of the matrix with no additional wiring required. You simply insert the board into the matrix, plug the board into a USB power source, and it's ready to go. It has its own internal microphone, or you can plug in an audio source directly to the audio jack. By plugging in an IR receiver dongle, you gain complete control over color and effects using one of those cheap $2 remote controls. 
The Mesmerizer board also features two USB channels so that you can use one for serial logging and programming while using the other for source level debugging in Visual Studio Code. With in-circuit debugging, you free yourself from the tyranny of trying to debug with just serial printfs. It's normally pretty complicated to set up and wire, but with the Mesmerizer board, it's completely plug and play. You just add the jumpers to the board and debugging becomes available immediately. The Mesmerizer board is working in prototype form and soon I plan to mass produce the completely assembled PCBs and make them available through the channel. Once you have a board, you simply plug it into a matrix and you're ready to go with zero configure wiring. One aspect that I'm particularly proud of is the setup. You know how with many IoT devices you have to do that annoying dance where you disconnect from your real Wi-Fi, join the device's private Wi-Fi hotspot with your phone, and then set up the real Wi-Fi credentials before going back to your original Wi-Fi? Well, I hate that process. So flashing the Mesmerizer, or any Night Driver project, is as easy as plugging the ESP32 into a USB port and visiting the installation website. There's no software to download and nothing to install, it's all automatic. In just moments, your ESP32 is live on the web and ready to go. Make sure you subscribe to the channel though, so you don't miss the availability announcement when the boards are ready. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and comment on this video for a chance at the NVIDIA 4080 giveaway that I told you about up front. I'll put links to the M5 stack in the video description. I'll also include the code for the fake Windows shell on GitHub. If you have any interest in matters related to autism, Asperger's, or ASD, check out my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. A link to the free sample is in the video description. It's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. It's everything I know now that I wish I'd known back then. And it's intended not just for people who might be on the spectrum themselves, but for anyone who loves, lives with, or works with somebody who is. Remember, I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so please be sure to leave me one of each before you go today. In the meantime, and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.